Hi everybody and welcome back to the channel. In today's video we're taking homeschool outside and we are planting some garlic and digging up dandelion roots to make tincture. So I am out front. We've already planted two garden boxes with garlic. Um, and then I decided that I wanted to put a little more in. My husband protested a little bit until I reminded him of the scapes. I want the garlic for the garlic scapes because we never go through all of the garlic um, and we never quite have enough for seed for the next year. But I love, love having the garlic scapes. So I need to come out here because this bed's gotten kind of weedy and I need to um, clean it up to get the garlic in and of course one of the things that's in the bed are dandelions and this is the perfect time for me to harvest uh, dandelions so I'm gonna have kiddo help me so you want to talk about dandelion roots right yeah. why uh, why do you think we harvest roots this time of year oh because well roots are saving up more nutrients preparing for the dormancy in winter yeah now some people like to harvest their roots in the spring which is fine you can do that too but i've always found them to be more potent in the fall and we've been pretty like we're having a very strange fall it's been very mild um, it's only i think it's about eight degrees right now as you can see i'm just in a vest and so our dandelion leaves haven't died back yet and what's nice is they leave this really visible rosette that should be very easy to find so i'll turn the camera around and show you what i'm talking about and then hopefully i can get kiddo here to actually film some footage of me digging up the roots so this is the front bed i'm going to be adding some extra garlic not a lot just a bit we don't want it to take up. Last year we planted this entire bed with garlic and um, we just didn't like the aesthetics of it. We'd rather this be flowers, but until we can build more garden boxes, this is what we have. But as you can see, I have some dandelions that need to be dug up. And this is what you're looking for. Hopefully I can get enough light here. So they have a very distinctive leaf pattern. I was just telling my son, it's almost like someone plunked a bunch of triangles on top of each other. So you're looking for that distinctive leaf pattern. And they also grow out in a rosette, meaning they start in the center and they sort of grow out in a circle. So these are the leaves you're looking for and we're gonna be digging out that entire tap root and using it for medicine. As a side note, I know this video is gonna be about dandelion roots, but getting your kiddos to help with planting garlic is a great activity, especially for my little guy who does not really like to get his hands dirty, so. I put the holes in. I have one of these handy dandy tools I got from my friend, which I love. I put the holes in and he fills them up with garlic. All right, so I've actually moved over to my medicinal herb bed because as you can see, I have these amazingly huge dandelions. And if I'm gonna harvest dandelions first, I'm gonna take them from areas where I can't really have them be, like in my garlic bed or I'm gonna to try to find the largest ones possible so that way I am getting sort of more bang for my buck because big leaves usually indicate big roots. So what I'm gonna do is I've just got a regular old um, garden spade here. If you're harvesting something like burdock roots and I do have another video on harvesting roots for medicine, you may want a larger shovel. But for today, this should probably work. And I'm just gonna go down into that soil and I'm just gonna loosen because we've all know what we what happens when we are trying to pull dandelions out of our gardens and if we don't loosen that soil we risk the root breaking off so i'm just going to give it and i'm just going to keep loosening right just kind of wiggling the soil dandelions got usually has like a nice long tap root it looks like i got a nice big one here too oh this is awesome um so I got a worm too. Mr. Worm will go back into the soil, but check that out. I got the whole root and uh, nice and big. And so this sort of makes the harvesting more worthwhile. What's also really beautiful about these leaves is um, I can dehydrate these for my greens powder. They're a little bitter to eat this time of year, but they're in really good shape. So I'm going to use this entire plant, the leaves to make greens powder and the roots to make medicine. What are you doing now? 
I am, here you can zoom in on this, I'm being very careful with my really sharp Fiskars knife here and I'm cutting off the greens and then I'm putting the roots in the bucket. And ideally, before I bring these roots inside, I want them as clean as possible because I'm on septic and even if you're on city water, you don't want a lot of dirt going down the drain. So I might let these dry a little bit and then brush them off before bringing them inside to process them. So our bucket is for the roots. Some of these are really big. It's really exciting. Um, and then the leaves I will save either to dehydrate or um, give them to the chickens, one or the other. Here, you can show them one more time what I'm working on. You can just, uh, a little closer, buddy. You can just rip them off if you want, but I have found that if you use a knife, the process is a lot smoother. So that's gonna go to be processed. All right, so it's the next day and I'm back inside ready to process my dandelion roots. Roots are actually really forgiving in this way. Um, unlike some of the aerial parts of plants, like say you're harvesting mints or calendula, thyme, rosemary, any of those types, and you wanna make tincture, I would never just let them sit out. <laughs> I would process them right away to ensure that I am capturing the widest range of chemical constituents and that the plant is as vibrant and close to being alive as possible. But like I said, roots are much more forgiving. And because I sort of let them dry a little, the dirt was a lot easier to get off. So here are my <laughs> freshly uh, scrubbed and washed dandelion roots. And the little hairs, like, you know, you're gonna wanna keep those. I include those in um, my tinctures, definitely. Now, one of the best tools for scrubbing roots is actually these little brushes that you can get at Ikea. They're not very expensive and I have found them to be fantastic. We have one that's outside that we use for scrubbing the dirt off and then one that we use inside. I just color coat them. So you're obviously gonna need some dandelion root for this. If you do not have a copy of my free tincture guide, I highly recommend snagging a copy. There will be a link below. Like I said, it's completely free and it'll guide you through all these instructions on how to make tinctures. Now, if you want more in-depth information about making tinctures on a deeper level and you want to learn more about all these amazing plants, how to use them in your life in a way that's easy to understand, um, sort of like bite-sized pieces and with a community that is just as enthusiastic as you, I encourage you to check out my monthly membership platform. We actually did a whole class on dandelion root and dandelion leaf and flower. Anyway, you are gonna need roots. You're gonna need alcohol of some kind. Again, grab my tincture guide. I go through everything in there. You're gonna need a mason jar. I like using 500 milliliter mason jars. So even though I'm going to be making two liters of tincture today, I'm going to break it up into four different jars because I don't want to press all of those at the same time. Once you press your tinctures, meaning that you've removed the plant material, they're exposed to oxygen um, for longer periods of time and they don't keep as long as when the herbs are still in them. So I like 500 milliliter jars and because I'm using a mason jar, you're also gonna want a piece of parchment paper that's gonna go in between the lid and the alcohol, that's, that's gonna prevent the alcohol and the chemical constituents um, from the plants uh, corroding your lid. Because once you start getting like flecks of metal in your tincture, in my opinion, um, it's no longer safe to use. And you're gonna need a good chopping knife of some kind. I have a Mezzaluna and uh, people have asked me about this all the time. Get it at a good quality kitchen store um, and you wanna make sure you get a good quality one and not a double bladed one, just a single bladed one like this one. Works really, really great. All right, from here, you're gonna use your knife, whatever kind you have. Um, and I first start by cutting it into sort of more manageable chunks before I really get moving with this thing. <laughs> Just like that. And I've weighed out all of my plants ahead of time. Again, all of those ratios are in my free tincture guide, so definitely get a copy of that. And once I have things in more manageable pieces, I find if I really start chopping quickly when the pieces are large, things just go flying across my kitchen. I will then, and look at that, <laughs> a piece already went flying anyway, you see what I mean? 
but I want to start working fairly efficiently. I would never stop chopping my plant material partway through. Right now, these roots are oxidizing. That means they are being exposed to oxygen because I have increased the surface area, i.e. I have chopped these plants. So more oxygen is being exposed and this is slowly um, starting to decrease the medicinal properties of it. So this would not be a good time. I've said this before, don't take a phone call right now. Don't pause and scroll through Instagram. Really be mindful of what you're doing. If you like to incorporate spirituality into your herbal practice, this is where you can start to connect with the plant on a deeper level. You can give thanks to dandelion for its medicines and whatever it taught you through the harvesting process. So I want them chopped fairly fine. Again, this increases surface area. So you're going to have other herbalists say roughly chopped is okay. And again, do what works for you. But the more surface area I create that comes in contact with the alcohol, the, the more chemical constituents I can pull out. All right, so this is chopped to my satisfaction. The pieces are fairly uniform in size, which is what I want. And from here, you're just gonna place them into your mason jar. And again, if you have access to wide mouth um, amber packer bottles, those are really great too. I'm just having trouble sourcing them. So for now I use mason jars. I have a few, I have a few coveted um, amber packer jars that I will use. But like I said, they're a little harder. The wide mouth ones are a little harder to source. Okay. All right, so my jar is filled. And then you're just gonna top with your menstruum, i.e. alcohol of choice. I prefer a mixture of 30% alcohol to 10% vegetable grade glycerin. That has always worked for me. The, um, the only time I don't do that is when I'm working with medicinal mushrooms. So from here, you're gonna place your parchment paper barrier, screw on your lid, and you're done. Well, there you have it, folks. We just made dandelion root tincture. Pretty easy. Now, of course, the one thing I haven't done yet, which you absolutely need to do, is label your tinctures. So I like to use painter's tape. It's really simple and it peels off nicely. At the very least, you want to include the name of the plant that you tinctured and the date that you made it. Other details are absolutely up to you. Some people like to include moon phases and astrological phases. They like to include where they harvested it. Um, so really it's up to you, but bare minimum you want at least the name and the date because there's nothing worse than finding a tincture jar and you have no clue what's in it. Now, don't forget, I do have that other video on harvesting roots for medicine. This time of year, I'm frequently harvesting burdock, inula or elecampane root, uh, dandelion, of course. Sometimes I'm harvesting milkweed root if I'm low in that in clinic. And sometimes I'm harvesting stinging nettle root. So it really just depends on what I need in clinic. Now there's something I wanna show you that happens with some roots. Sometimes it happens with dandelion, not nearly as frequently as with elecampane or inula. You see that? Okay, don't freak out. If you're, if in like six to eight weeks, your tincture looks like this, this one I processed uh, the 24th of October in 2020. And so this is just a chemical constituent that has been pulled from the plant called inulin. Okay. And it's going to settle to the bottom because it's heavier. This doesn't mean your tincture went bad. So I'm showing this to you just in case it happens with your burdock or your dandelion or your inula tinctures. Don't throw it out. It hasn't gone bad. Um, you know, just give it a good shake and you're good to go. So that can sometimes happen. Now, if you have any questions or comments on how to make dandelion root tincture, I forgot. You're gonna want this to sit minimum six to eight weeks before you press it. But again, that's in my free tincture guide. So don't forget to snag that. And also don't forget to check out my monthly membership platform. If you're ready to really deep dive into um, holistic medicine in a way that's easy to understand and in a community that's just as passionate as you are, there's also links to Weavers of Plant Wisdom below. But if you've got questions about dandelion root tincture or how to make it, leave those in the comments. And until next time, this is Corrine from Spirea Herbs, wishing you health and wellness.